In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the plugins that I actually use in Figma. Some of these plugins you've probably used before or you've at least heard of, but I guarantee there's at least one or two in here that you haven't that's worth your time. I wanna get this first one out of the way because you've probably already heard of it, but it is incredibly important in your design workflow. It is Stark the Contrast and Accessibility Checker. So you can just search Stark in your plugins and find this. And there are a few different tools in here. The main one everyone uses is Contrast. And if you have two different frames or just different elements in your design, like text on a white frame in this case, it will go ahead and tell you, you have selected the black, this is on white, and this passes with a ratio of 21-1. But it also gives you even more than that, it shows you the standards for AA and AAA. So you want these to at least be AA, which is a 4.5 to one ratio for a normal size text, which in this case it is. But this is the main one I use, and I use this in things like this, here is a design system that I made with all of my different colors, and I have all the type on here letting me know, hey, if I'm using this for a button or a background, this is the color type I should use, and this is what it passes to make sure everything is color accessible in this design system. The next plugin on the list is called Mind Map. This is the particular one that I like to use. I'm gonna hit run on this one. And with this modal, we have two options. We can do a horizontal or a vertical layout. So let's just click vertical. And we can choose the style of line. Let's go with some clean right angles and add a little bit of color just to make it look a little bit more appealing. Now with this, you can mind map, uh, but I particularly use this in cases of site maps. So I would say, let's say home up top, got a large O there. And then these would be our kind of sub pages. So we may have a products page or whatnot. And then if we need something below the products page, so maybe the products page takes us to the particular item that we're selling. And then maybe we have another one and you can see how we can create mind maps or detailed site maps with this plugin in just a few seconds. Here's one that I recently did. This is for a actual client project. This was kind of version one where we laid everything out to see what pages we kind of needed to design and develop and to see if we had a good flow to the website. This next one is Rename It, another good one for large files like design systems. Not to be confused with the Figma AI's rename layers where it kind of goes through and just renames things and kind of cleans it up. This actually gives you a few different options here. So if I just select all of the icons I have here in my document, and we may have in a larger file thousands of these, and we can go find and replace selected layers. The reason this can be so useful in something like a design system is we have three different options over here. We have mini, solid, and outline. Well, maybe in the future I change my mind and I don't like the naming scheme that I went with. And so I wanna change mini to small. And so to do that, all I have to do is type in mini and then just replace it with small. And now all of those that have mini before are small. Throughout this video, you may notice that a lot of these plugins are very helpful in larger files and design systems. And the reason for that is because for the last few years, I've been working on a design system. This is 8-point. You can find this at 8point.io. The link will be down at the top of the description. So I guess today I am the sponsor of this video. If you're tired of designing from scratch on all of your new projects, meet 8-point. 8-point is an ever-growing design system for Figma. 8-Point has a soft four-point grid to make sure everything aligns properly, customizable components to give you control in your designs, and variables to swap themes with ease. This isn't just a one-time release, as 8-Point will be updated on a monthly basis, and once you purchase 8-Point, you have free updates for life. If you want to check out 8-Point, you can go over to 8-Point.io, that's 8PT.io, or there's a link at the top of the description. If you want to know if 8-Point is right for you, you can click the preview in Figma in the top right and look through all the components and the entire file before you purchase just to make sure. With all that said though, let's get back to the video. Next up is annotation sticky notes. And these are just little sticky notes that you can add in your Figma file. They come with a few different options. You can choose the type size, you can choose between a few different colors, and you can choose where the arrow is at. For this one, I would want it on the 
right top and you can see it adds that little arrow there but if i needed it on the bottom right i can add it there as well so the reason i like these is i can leave them in my document while i'm working in my design i can just glance over at them and see what needs to be done and i don't like to replace the figma comment system with these i like to have these in addition because if you know how the figma comments work you can add your comment and then you have to kind of go over here and hover over it or have to click into it to leave it open, which can get a little messy when I have a lot of quick comments that I just wanna add. So these are really useful for that. One plugin I like to use to add some really cool shadows is Beautiful Shadows. So if I select this button here, maybe I want a kind of glowy shadow on this. This is a really nice plugin to generate some really aesthetic looking shadows. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm actually gonna change this to hex code, drop in my color, and you can see we have this nice kind of glowy effect in here. And we can make some adjustments. You'll see this is the angle. So if I drag this little ball around, you'll see that changes. This is the depth where you can see how far the shadow, if I move this out of the way, here in this little modal you can see. And in the design, you can see that it makes that shadow extend further since it's further away. We have the opacity of this. So I'm gonna lower that just slightly make it a little bit more subtle. And of course you can adjust all of these with these little handles to get the exact glow you're looking for. And it gives you these nice custom drop shadows that are applied to this element. So that stands out really nicely in your design. If you're looking to generate some color shades, a good one is just color shades. And this gives you this little modal here, you can set the color code, so if I just grab this blue color here that I'm using. Just grab that, paste that in, and you can change the contrast level. Uh, so you can see as I scale this, the contrast between each of these grows or shrinks based off of this number value. Set it at like 48, and it generates this really nice stack of colors with their corresponding hex values on the right and the color value on the left. It also shows the correct type color to use on this. So if you go back and use Stark on this, it'll probably approve this color white on this blue. Really great for generating color shades. Before we dive into the last plugin, let's go over some honorable mentions and just rapid fire them off here. Button lets you add and open links straight from your Figma file. Figmoji allows you to add emojis that are SVG into your design files. Random Name Generator, 3D Transformer, to skew and rotate frames in a 3D space. And finally, Automator automates a few different things here to speed up your design workflow. This last one's one you may not think that you would need, but it actually comes in clutch in quite a few designs. Cursor just simply allows you to add a cursor into your design file. I find that when I'm showcasing a lot of different features in my designs, I come across a point where I need some kind of a hover cursor or just a pointer just to add into the design to make it look a little nicer and it works flawlessly and easily. That's gonna do it for today's video. A bunch of simple plugins. These are the ones I actually use in Figma and I hope you discovered some in today's video. To eliminate repetitive design and speed up your workflow, make sure you check out 8Point. That's 8Point.io. That's 8PT.io. The link is at the top of the description. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.